It's time for some Arkham Horror LCG, or Living Card Game. So, this is a game that if you looked on my Twitter, uh, and if you're following me on Twitter, as well as I think I believe I posted in the community tab on my YouTube channel, um, this is a game that my girlfriend and I picked up, or at least I picked up, and then I, I convinced my girlfriend to try it out. Uh, I got the core box for Arkham Horror, and uh, I really, really enjoyed it with my girlfriend. We beat the first scenario, which we're actually going to uh, replay today because I do want to try it solo two-handed. Um, and uh, also sort of make this sort of the start of our Ar Arkham Horror campaign. Um, and I, I think you'll see that a lot on this channel. I think there's quite a few games that I want to sort of revisit and start anew. Um, so you'll see uh, quite a few new things on the channel, or I guess new in, in terms of on this channel, but uh, some of them are fairly old games. Um, and yeah, so I really, really enjoy this game. If you don't know what this game is, uh, this is game is by Fantasy Flight Games. It's by the same uh, people who publish the Lord of the Rings card game. So it's similar in that sense. It's a living card game, hence the LCG, meaning that rather than like a CCG, like a collectible card game or TCG, tradable card game, uh, where you buy boosters from the specific set to hopefully get what you need, um, they periodically release expansions for this game and you get all the content for that cycle. Uh, you just get different investigator packs or different campaign packs, um, but you don't have to open up any boosters or anything like that, which is very, very nice, um, as much as I do love opening a good booster. Um, and this game's been going on for a very long time. It has got a very strong community. I believe that it's been going on for about six, six or seven years. Um, I have the revised core set, um, and that's essentially what we're going to be playing with today. I, I do have the Dunwich Legacy Cycle. Um, however, I haven't included any cards from there into this because I, I have yet to look through them with my girlfriend. Um, so we haven't done any deck building or anything like that. Um, I love deck building. I'm an ex Magic the Gathering player. Um, still occasionally play, but I sold most of my collection. Um, and yeah, I this this definitely the deck building aspect definitely caught my eye for this game. So I'm really really excited to dive in. Um, I've already got it all set up. I the game's been out for a long time and. Uh, if you haven't played this game before, there's plenty of great how to play videos out there. I will talk a little bit about what I'm doing as I'm going on, but um, in terms of an, an in-depth how-to, um, I'll leave that to the other, other people who've done plenty better videos than I have. Um, but let's start off. This is going to be the Knight of the Zealot campaign. This is the core campaign or the core box campaign, which essentially has three scenarios. Um, as to sort of teach you the mechanics of the game, but also sort of introduce you to the world of Arkham Horror. And if you're not familiar with Arkham Horror or Arkham Games, essentially Lovecraftian uh, Cthulhu world, um, where you're essentially investigators uh, having to deal with all the chaos and all the bad things that go bump in the night. So, uh, the introduction for Night of the Zealots. Friday, September 18th, 1925, Arkham, Massachusetts. It is the end of a long and abnormally hot summer. The first hints of autumn beckon, but a heavy heat persists, relentless. A silent, unspoken anger grips the town. Tempers are short, and in the last week alone, there have been numerous reports of townspeople coming to heated, violent blows with one another over simple misunderstandings. And now, a call from James Hankerson. He, seemed, he claims to have found a dismembered body in his barn. Blaming the weather would be too easy, there is something wrong with this town, and not a whole lot this old soothsayer can do to stop the slide. My auguries indicate a small group of investigators will soon take note of these strange happenings and set forth to make things right. I'll be watching their progress, but I won't be holding my breath. So there's the introduction to the game. Again, we are playing two different investigators today. Um, you can play the game completely solo, but I've heard this is sort of the best way to play it, which is sort of why I want to try it out. Uh, we're playing with Roland Banks, who is the detective um, or the ex-fed or federal officer. I should say not ex-fed. I don't think he's an ex-fed. Um, and that is one of the core box uh, characters. And this is the one that I played with my girlfriend and it's probably going to be my main character because I do love a good combat. And then I'm going to try out Wendy, uh, who is classified as an urchin. Uh, I think is, I, I, I just learned there's classes to this game. So I, I believe Wendy's part of the survivor class. Um, so evades a lot and gets really lucky with certain things. Um, but uh, I've never played with Wendy before. Um, my girlfriend played Daisy, uh, who, was, uh, who was very, very good. Um, but I'm curious to see how the survivor class works out because I know they have a, some interesting things going on when it comes to failing tests and stuff like that. So um, let us dive into the first scenario. So the first scenario, the gathering. 
You and your partners have been investigating strange events taking place in your home city of Arkham, Massachusetts. Over the past few weeks, several townspeople have mysteriously gone missing. Recently, their corpses turned up in the woods, savaged and half-eaten. The police and newspapers have stated that wild animals are responsible, but you believe there is something else going on. You were gathered uh, together at the lead investigator's home to discuss these bizarre events. And I have chosen uh, Roland to be the lead investigator. Um, so we essentially are in uh, Roland's study currently. And these are the location cards. So you can see our two character cards to represent where which location we're in. You can move through different locations in this game. And you, the whole goal is to go and find clues, uh, which are represented by these tokens, the green ones here, um, to progress the act or your main goal, which is represented by these cards here. So the left one is actually the agenda, which the doom is tracked on. And that essentially represents all the negative forces going against you. So while we are in our study, so um, the study says you've been investigating the strange events occurring in Arkham for several days now. Your desk is covered in newspaper articles, police reports, and witness accounts. And then we also will read the agenda card because the, these sort of go together like a book. There's three cards in each pile. Again, the agenda on the left side is the bad stuff. Um, you can see on the left the number of how many Doom tokens it needs to progress, and then on the right is how many clues we need on our card to actually progress the main story. But let's start with the, the agenda first. What's going on? It is late at night. You are holed up in your study, researching the bloody disappearances that have been taking place in, your, in the region. A few hours into your research, you hear the strand, uh, sound of strange chanting coming from your parlor down the hall. At the same time, you hear dirt churning, as if something were digging beneath the floor. Um, and then to the act card, trapped. As you leap to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind only solid wall. You're trapped inside your study until you can find another way out. So, uh, once you get into a location, you're able to flip it over and, on, uh, and see exactly what you need to progress. So you can see there's the flipped over side of the study. On the right side, it determines how many clues spawn on that card multiplied by how many uh, investigators there are. So there's, it's two times two investigators. So four and the left number is the shroud level. And that is essentially the skill check we need to actually gain these clues that I've just placed on the card. Now, how do we actually do that? Well, first off, each investigator draws five cards out of their deck. So let's draw Roland's and then let's draw Wendy's. Now you do get a free mulligan. Um, so you're essentially going to set aside some cards you don't want, as well as any weaknesses, which are the bad cards, which uh, every deck in Arkham before you build it has to include some weaknesses uh, or a weakness. I, I, I pulled mine. So these uh, don't come into play. They're essentially neg uh, negative representations of your character or negative traits. Um, so unfortunately, or luckily we drew that so we can set that aside and that'll get shuffled in again and we'll draw a new card because we don't want, we don't get the weakness in our starting hand, but we have a machete, which is great. We also have a knife. So we have two one-handed weapons. I do also have a magnifying glass though. And this one's really, really good. Um, so we got magnifying glass, machete, vicious blow, guard dog, which is a great and knife. Uh, oh, one thing I also forgot is every investigator does get, um, resources they get five resources for five There's wendy's i already drew Rollins, but i forgot wendy and these are essentially are what used to pay for the cards now there's different types of cards in this game um but essentially if you look here on the top left for example indicates the uh how much it costs so this magnifying glass costs one to actually equip onto our hand and you can see in the bottom right dictates what slot it goes into um, but you're able to have multiple cards in play some cards activate right away some cards uh, stay on the field um, additionally you'll see that every single card in the on the left side and this is part of the cool one of the cool parts about this game is you can see this little icon on the left side represents one of the different uh, stats of your character so roland for example here i don't know the names of the stats offhand but you can see there's a little head there it's like the mind um, or wisdom potentially, so three, his knowledge is a book, three, four might, because he's obviously a fighter, 
and then two agility. Um, so when you're doing skill checks, they'll all correspond to one of those four different stats. And when you're actually doing the skill check, you're able to commit a certain amount of cards. If you're the investigator who's actually doing the skill check, you can uh, uh, commit as many cards as you want, but you can also have your fellow investigators help out, but they can only commit one card. And essentially that would just boost your specific stat. So this would give plus one to a fight stat or a fight skill check or combat. Um, now, once you've actually finished committing, this is the chaos bag. This is the dice of the game. So rather than using dice, there's a bunch of these different tokens. There's a bunch off to the side and they represent different modifiers. You actually, depending on the difficulty you're playing on, we're playing on standard difficulty, you add in a certain amount. So it's a really, really uh, cool way to actually affect how easy or how difficult you want the game to be. Um, but essentially, whenever you make a skill check, you'll draw from this bag and it'll modify your skill. Uh, and then you'll have to, afterwards, then you'll compare it to whatever skill DC or whatever the requirement is and see if you pass. Let me just grab some tea here. Um, so, obviously, if you if you had two might and you're going up against a skill check that required two, but you drew a minus one, that would mean you'd fail. Now, you want to make sure to meet or exceed the skill check. So, um, but I like this hand, uh, having starting with some early weapons for uh, Roland is great. Starting with Guard Dog is super fantastic. We can get that on the field for later. Um, and then, so we will take the weakness that we took out earlier. We'll put it into the deck and we'll reshuffle everything. Uh, this is one of the nice things about being an ex Magic the Gathering player is I have all these extra sleeves to uh, to shuffle with. And I, I miss shuffling cards with sleeves. It just makes it so much more satisfying. Also actually, much better shuffle. Uh, all right, let's see what Wendy has. So Wendy has, uh, look what I found, a knife, lucky, sneak attack, interesting. A lot of these cards I have never seen before, and flashlight. Flashlight's pretty good. Um, both Wendy and Roland have three knowledge, and that's what's required to actually do clue checks or investigate actions. Um, ooh, look what I found. It's really, really strong, actually. Play after you fail a skill test by two or less while investigating, and then that lets you discover two uh, clues in your location. Assuming you fail. Um, sweet. So let us, uh, I think, yeah, I'm happy with this. We also have a hand uh, of some combat cards. We got some ways to get clues and bump skill checks. So I'm good with Wendy's hand as well. So I'll set that aside. Um, and then we essentially start the game. So we have to find our way out of this study. Um, by getting the clues. Now, uh, each, uh, also I won't be showing every single card. I'll, I'll, I believe they have a really, really cool thing on Arkham DB or called Arkham DB. It's a database of all the cards in the game. They have images and stuff like that. So I'll try to, hopefully it's not too rough to edit, but I'll try to just throw the image up of the card that I'm talking about on screen. Cause otherwise doing this every, with every single card, I'll just take be tedious. But you can see sort of the round breakdown here. We start with the mythos phase, which essentially adds doom to the agenda. However, you, you skip that phase or skip that phase in the first round. And then so now it is the investigators phase. So it's asynchronous turns. Uh, so you can choose who you want, which investigator you want to go first. However, they do have to complete their turn before moving on. I think we are going to start with um, and we have three different actions uh, for an investigator to take. Uh, you can see all the different actions that one can take on this action card. Uh, you can do as many of them as you want to in any combination. So if you, know, you see the top one, there's draw one card and gain one resource. I could spend all three of my actions to draw three cards or gain three resources because um, resources are necessary to play your cards or most of your cards at least. Um, and then eight is your max hand size. So if you have more than eight cards, you have to discard. Um, I think first thing is I want to get the guard dog down. So I think I'm going to spend three resource and I'm going to play the guard dog. So that'll go in my play area, which I think we'll just move things over so you can see what's in my play area. Uh, so we'll, we'll put that there. Uh, so that cost of three, that was one action. I think I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to play my magnifying glass. That just seems good. It's just one resource, but it's fast, meaning it actually doesn't cost me an action to play, which is very, very... Uh, damn, that, that card's really good. It's the first time I've used that one. Uh, so I still have two actions left. I think I'm going to draw a card, and uh, then I'm going to spend my last action to uh, investigate. Uh, so here's where the skill check comes in. So 
My magnifying glass actually provides one extra knowledge while investigating, so that bumps my three up to a four, meaning I'm four to two on the study. So as long as I don't draw anything worse than a minus two, I'll succeed. Um, and at this point, people can commit cards to bump that up if they want to. Um, I don't think, well, I can't commit anything with uh, Roland. I do know that... Actually, we could play a look what I found if we fail. Yeah, okay. Although I think that might be only for Wendy. Either way, I'll take a minus, or I'll take a plus two. So we draw from the bag and see what we get. We get a zero. Nice. So that is going to be a success, meaning we get one of these clues and we put it on our card. Now we need only two clues to actually progress the act and we can expend those clues as a free action essentially. So that was all my actions for Roland. Now we move on to Wendy. There's not much to do for Wendy. Wendy uh, doesn't have any assets or, or allies to put in play, I guess I should say. Um, but I think we will get the night uh, flashlight down because that is going to help. Um, and it, it has three, uh, has, uh, three uses. Um, and if we spend a supply, we can actually investigate and your location gets minus two for this investigation, which essentially means that we can't fail unless we draw the auto fail token. That'll always make you fail. Unfortunately, yes, there is an auto fail token in the game. However, of course, if you want to make the game easier, you can take that out. Um, but I believe like pretty much any, any Arkham game has an auto fail mechanic because that's just how Lovecraftian flies. All right. So, um, I actually don't think I need it because I do have Look What I Found, which actually could get us a bunch of clues if we need to. If we fail, we actually get to use Look What I Found, so I think we won't do that. Um, so that's one action to get that there. It costs two resources to play the flashlight. Um, I'm going to then, I think, use my second action to investigate. So right now we're at three to two. So anything worse than a minus one, we fail what we do, but we do have cards to counteract that. So I'm not gonna spend anything. So we get, ooh, that's a minus three. So that is gonna be a fail. However, because that is a fail of two or more, or by two or less, uh, cause yeah, we're at three to two. Um, minus uh, three would bring us to zero. So we fail by two. So that still falls into look what I found. So this actually uh, can be played. Uh, play after you fail a skill by two or less while investigating. So we'll discard that. And that is actually going to discover two clues at your location. So even though we failed that because of that card, we actually gain two clues. And so that's really, really sweet. So that was our second action with Wendy. I think our third action we are going to I think just set up. Um, well, actually, let's let's draw a card. Actually, we have unexpected courage. Oh, that's nice. That's just a plus two to any skill check that we can commit to. Uh, sweet. Okay, so we have enough clues now. Um, I think we will. Uh, yeah, I think we will. Go ahead and advance the act. Let me just double check the learn to play or the learn to play because I don't know if we can do this just whenever or it happens at the end of the round. All right, so it says that it can be done during any uh, investigator's turn for free. Um, however, I'm not really sure the timing wise because we technically did our last action. So I don't know if that means our turn's done and we can't just do this at the end of our turn. Um, again, I'm still learning this game. If I get some things wrong, I apologize. Feel free to let me know in the comments below because I know that community for this is very awesome. Um, so I'm just going to do it uh, at the end of Wendy's turn. We have enough clues to progress the act. So we're going to place that there and progress the act. So that'll essentially flip over. It'll give us some instructions and provide some extra context as to what's going on. And then we'll move on. You notice that the edges of your newly purchased rug are tattered and mud stained. Finding this odd, you shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug. To your surprise, you see the door leading out of your study. You slowly turn the knob and the door swings open, revealing your hallway below. You jump through the doorway, landing on your feet on soft dirt. The door to the study slams shut above you. 
The smell of burning wood fills the narrow hall, intermingled with a scent of rot and decay. Put the put the play put into play the set aside hallway, cellar, attic, and parlor. Uh, so we have the parlor. We have the attic, and we have the hallway, uh, which should actually replace the study because I know this goes away along with its clue. We'll end up in the hallway and the cellar is at the bottom there. Um, place each investigator in the hallway and remove the study from the game. And then we go to the next act card, the barrier. A glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlor. As you move toward it, intense heat forces you to back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss it at the barrier and watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Perhaps there's something in a cellar or attic that can help. And we need three clues to do that. But also, when the round ends, assuming that we're in the hallway, um, we can spend the required number of clues to advance. So that one's a little bit different. So this one provides an actual objective that we have to make sure we have the clues in the hallway before we can advance. And that's done at the end of the round rather than whenever it is on our turn. <laughs> Okay, so that is going to do it for our investigator's turn. Then we move to the enemy phase. There's no enemies currently, and then we go to upkeep, which essentially, oops, I should have flipped these over. These have a black and white side to represent when the players have gone. Those would flip over in this upkeep phase. We deal with any upkeep uh, things that we need to deal with, um, ready, exhausted enemies, so on and so forth, as well as every investigator does get one resource and draws a card. So Wendy drew survival instinct. If this test is successful during an ev evasion attempt, the evading investigator may immediately disengage from each other. Enemy engage with him or her and may move to a connecting location. Wendy likes to run. And for Roland, we got emergency catch, which is nice. This is just a straight up gain three resources. Um, all right, so then we go back to the start of the round. Now now we actually do do uh, now we do the mythos phase now because we skipped we skipped that in the first round. So we place a doom counter on the agenda track. We check to see if we need to advance it. We don't because we need three on there. And then um, each investigator has to draw from the encounter deck. And this deck sucks. This deck also has a bunch of bad things. This is where enemies can spawn, so on and so forth. So we draw one for each investigator, starting with no, uh, Roland. Roland has frozen in fear. Revelation, put frozen in fear into play in your threat area. The first time you perform one of the following actions, move, fight, or evade each round, it costs one additional action. At the end of your turn, test three willpower. If you succeed, discard it. Ugh, that's sort of gross. All right, well, hopefully we can get rid of that. Uh, and then Wendy gets grasping hand. So it's a revelation, it's just a hazard. So we have to instantly test agility, which is great because that's one of our best skills. For each point you fail by, take one damage. Um, we're at four agility to the test of three. So it's four to three for us. I don't think I really need to commit anything. Yeah, I think, I think we're good. Yeah, I don't think it's worth using anything. We're at plus one. I think that should be fine. So we'll do that. And we get a zero. Perfect. So that is going to be success. So that does nothing. Nice. Okay, so now that the mythos phase is done, we move back on to the investigators phase. I don't think, yeah, Wendy doesn't have anything to get rid of that frozen in fear card because that one sort of sucks. Um, now we don't know, oh yeah, we should flip over the hallway. The hallway does not come with any clues but it does come with a shroud level, weirdly enough. And, and the cellar and the attic, we won't know how many clues there are in there until we actually move down there. So I think we'll have, we'll have, unfortunately I already know what these things are like, um, but I think we'll have Wendy go, cause I think Wendy, yeah, Wendy has the, the flashlight, which will help down in the cellar. And she's got some cards to actually help out with that. Because uh, we're going to be a little bit... Oh, yeah, what's uh, the ability for... When you reveal a Chaos token, choose and discard one card from your hand. Cancel that Chaos token and return it to the bag. Oh! Damn, that's pretty good. Uh, Roland's essentially lets us get clues for when we kill stuff at locations, but we haven't seen one yet, or seen any enemies yet. 
Um, so the first time you perform one of the following actions each round, it costs one, one additional action. So I could actually just only move and then, I guess, investigate with uh, Roland. Yeah, because he can't do much else if he's planning on moving. So yeah, we'll move to the attic. I'll flip this over. We can see that it requires two times the amount of investigators. So there's four clues on this one. Uh, there's a, this one counts as three. After you enter the attic, take one horror. Oh, so that's one of our sanity gone. Roland only has five, so that's not great. You can also add the damage to your allies, but my guard dog also also, also only has one sanity. Um, so then we'll use our second action to investigate, or I guess our last action, because it costed two to move thanks to Frozen and Fear. So we'll investigate. Uh, we get plus one while investigating, so we're at four knowledge uh, versus the one. So four to one, we realistically should be able to succeed on this. And we get... Hey, we get the special. So this is like the opposite of the auto fail token. So this activates an ability on your uh, card. Uh, for Roland, it essentially just means you get plus one for each clue at your location. So I essentially get plus four to this skill check. Doesn't really matter. It would have been a success even with a minus three. So not the not super necessary, but hey, it's better than getting the auto fail. So we get to grab this token. We need one more now to unlock the barrier, which is nice. Um, so that's going to do it for Roland's turn. So at the end of his turn, he can test for willpower and try to get that. Uh, so we can get rid of the Frozen and Fear card, hopefully. So I have three willpower versus the three required to beat it. I'm going to use uh, Guts, which actually can gives plus two willpower. And if we succeed, we get to draw a card. So now we're at five to, th uh, five to three. Do I want to commit any more? I, I definitely want to make sure this can go. I can't commit anything else for my hand, but... Maybe Wendy can help out. Wendy could get another plus two, but eh. No, I think we should save that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're at uh, plus two. I'll take that. So we're at five to three. We get a minus one. We're uh, drawing really well today. Because it doesn't, it wasn't like that in my girlfriend's and mine's game. Because I drew the auto fail token, I think four out of five of my draws. So. That was fun, um, but we did succeed. So this is gonna go to our discard pile, but because it succeeded, we do get to draw a card, which is awesome. Working a hunch, play only during your turn. Wow, just immediately discover one clue at your location. That seems pretty good. Um, that was the end of our turn though, so we can't play this. Costs two to play. So that's fine. Uh, so now we move on to Wendy's turn. So Wendy, um, I think we're just gonna have Wendy grab some more clues and then move back into the hallway because then we can probably get Roland back there and get, get the party going. Um, I think, yeah, we'll use one action. Uh, Roland's done here. Uh, we'll use one action to go into the attic. We'll take a horror because that is what the location requires. Um, and then second action, I think we will just go for it. So we are at three to one right now. I could spend a shroud or a flashlight. Actually, let's, let's do that. Let's spend one of our resources or spend one supply when we investigate. So the location gets minus two, meaning it's at zero currently. Can't go below zero, but zero essentially means as long as it's not the auto fail token, we succeed. And yeah, we get the cultist symbol, which there's a different card for every scenario that represents different things the special tokens do, depending on what difficulty you're on. This is for easy and standard, and there's obviously much harder stuff if we go to hard and expert. Um, but for the cultist symbol, it's just minus one. It counts as a minus one, but if you fail, you take one horror. But even with a minus one, we succeed. So that is going to be another clue for us. So there's two left on this card. So now we have all the three clues that we need. So I have one more action left. I think I want to get this knife into play. So I think we're gonna spend a resource and play our knife. So now we have a knife and a flashlight in our hands. 
And that is going to be it for the investigator's turn. So that is going to be it. There's no enemies, so no enemy phase. We go on to upkeep. We flip these over. And we each get a resource. As well as we draw a card. So Wendy drew... Oh, Wendy drew her weakness. Her basic weakness. I believe there's two different types of weaknesses. A regular weakness and basic weakness. Amnesia. Choose and discard all but one card from your hand. That is awful. So we only got to keep one card in our hand, huh? Well, I'm glad I at least played the knife up before I lost it. Um, I'm going to just keep lucky. It'll help us with skill checks. All right, well, there goes Wendy's hand. Uh, and then Roland drew Mind Over Matter. It's an event card, so we can play it during our turn as a fast action. Until the end of the round, you may use your knowledge in place of your might and your agility. Uh, that doesn't seem that good for Roland. I guess it would help for agility checks, but that's about it. Doesn't really need to replace his might. Um, all right, well, that is it for that. So then we go to a new round. So uh, for the new round, we have Doom going on the Doom Tracker. That still requires one more, so we actually don't need to pull anything for that, but now we pull Encounter cards. So for Roland, we get Grasping Hand, so this is what Wendy had earlier, so it's an Agility 3 test for each one you fail. For each point you fail by, take one damage. We're at Agility 2 to 3, so we're actually at minus one right now, which definitely sucks. Um, and we can't really commit anything to that. Uh, and the only card Wendy has doesn't work because um, we can't commit that. I, I'm i just going to get rid of this Mind Over Matter, I think, to make it a little bit easier. Um, it gives plus one to my agility. So we'll commit that. So we're at least at equal. So we're at zero. It's three to three. And now we just got to pray. We drew. Ooh, it's a skull token. So that means... It's minus X, where X is the number of ghoul enemies at your location. Well, because there's no ghoul enemies, that counts as a zero, so that's going to be a success. Wow, we got really lucky there. And then now we draw an encounter card for Wendy. So Wendy gets Ancient Evils. Luckily, no enemies yet. Uh, this is uh, Omen. Revelation, so we do it right away. Place one Doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. And that does, because that's going to be the third Doom for the agenda. So those go away. And now we flip over the card and see how the doom progresses. Your house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed, the ground, and the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It is, is, it is almost as if you have been transported somewhere else entirely, although every now and again you recognize elements of your former home. The lead investigator must decide. Choose one. Either each investigator discards one card at random from his or her hand, or the lead investigator takes two horror. Oof. I mean, I think I'm gonna have to go with a discard because if we if Roland takes two horror, he'll be at three, and he'll only need two more horror to actually go insane and die. Now it does get rid of Wendy's only card, but I think we're gonna go with that. I, I don't want to take I don't want to take any horror on Roland. Should have made Wendy the investigate the lead investigator. Dang it! All right, so random card discarded for Roland, and he discards the emergency cash. Not the worst thing. So that flips over and then we progress the agenda. So the new agenda card is Rise of the Ghouls. The floor beneath you is giving way and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels trying to find a way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do. Now that requires seven doom to progress. So we got a little bit of time to get this going. Um, so that was the mythos phase. Now we have investigators phase. Um, well, we don't need any more clues. We just need to get to the hallway. Does any, is there any more prep we want to do? I think I might want to, I'm going to use Roland first. I think we're going to equip the knife for one, because that's both of our hands spent now, or both of our uh, hands being used currently. Um, or actually, wait, uh, where's the machete? You get plus one for this attack if you attack the if the attacked enemy is the only enemy engaged with you. This attack deals plus one damage. 
Uh, actually, it's probably better than the knife, huh? So we'll actually spend all of our resource to instead play the machete, because then I'll keep the knife for if we want to commit it to a combat check instead. Um, I think I will then... Oof. I could actually... So that was one action. We'll use another action to move to the hallway. I think I might just want to draw a card and prepare. But we also do need resources. Um, let's, let's actually gain a resource. Um, so Wendy's turn, so that does it for Roland. Wendy is going to... Well, Wendy's going to draw two cards and just move, I think. So we'll draw one. We got, ooh, the 41 Derringer. Has three ammo. Spend one ammo to fight with plus two for the attack. If you succeed by two or more, this attack deals plus one damage. Uh, we can't equip that. I mean, I guess I could get rid of the flashlight now. I could spend all of my... Well, actually, let's draw for our... Well, hmm. I think I do want the Derringer, huh? Problem is, it doesn't make much... Well, I guess it doesn't make much sense to get have the knife plus the Derringer, because you can't use them both at the same time. Um, but the knife I could discard to get plus two for the attack and plus one damage. So I could use the knife right away on an enemy and then play the Derringer afterwards. So yeah, I think we'll draw two. So we get Leo De DeLuca. Damn. It's an ally, but it costs six to play. But it lets you take an additional action during your turn. That's pretty good. Um, and then we'll use our last action to move into the hallway. And because we're all in the hallway, um, well, it's the enemy phase now, no enemies. Upkeep phase, we flip these over. And because it's the end of the round, we also do get one resource each. Plus drawing a card. So Roland gets the old book of lore, which essentially lets us almost brainstorm our deck. And then Wendy gets to draw a card, gets pickpocketing. After you evade an enemy, exhaust pickpocketing to draw a card. So this is a talent card, similar. It's an asset, so we it stays in play. Um, sweet. And now because we're in the hallway, we have three clues. We'll get rid of these three clues and place them on the three that's required for the barrier and see what happens. So we flip over the barrier. Using the barrel from the attic, you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier. The barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice, then hisses and fades out of existence. The barrier blocking uh, the barrier blocking passage into the parlor has vanished. Reveal the parlor. Put put the set aside Lita Chantler into play. So this is an ally. And spawn the set aside ghoul priest in the hallway. Ooh. And because it spawns where the investigators are, it goes to one of the investigators. Um, We'll just have it go to Roland. So he's so now he's engaged with Roland currently. All right. So on to the next act card. What have you done? A woman with a torch stands in your uh, in your parlor, a glimmer of hatred in her eyes. What have you done to my barrier? She screams, furious. Before you can answer, a ghastly wail sounds behind you, and the creature we and a creature wearing robes and a deer skull mask tears through the wall, advancing towards you. Um, objective. If the ghoul priest is defeated, advance. So there's no not, no more clues to get, so we just have to kill this ghoul priest. So you can see how the enemies work, and the top left is their combat power, so that's what you're um, challenging with your own skill check. The middle is the amount of health it has, it's five times the amount of investigators, so it's got ten health. And whenever you do, you do a combat, you only deal one damage, or whenever you do the fight action. So this is going to be tough. And then we have four agility to actually evade it, which essentially lets you get out of engaged range. Um, it can also exhaust it. It's got Hunter and Retaliate. Its prey targets the highest might, which is going to be Roland. Um, now, Retaliate also means if we fail combat checks, it gets a free attack against us, which is not great. All right. Well, that is the end of the round. So we go to the Mythos phase. Some doom gets on the agenda. We then draw a encounter card for the investigators. Ooh, and this is not good. Roland got ghoul minion, so another enemy spawns on top of Roland. Now there's two enemies engaged with him. That's not good. 
And then we have dissonant voices for Wendy. So dissonant voices, put it into play in your threat area. You cannot play assets or events at the end. Oof, that's really bad. Uh, well, there goes our plan of playing down some assets because we can't play any of our cards. We can still use them to commit to tests, which we might have to do now um, to help out, but uh, we can't actually get them into play. Now we can move into the parlor now. And if we do move into the parlor and um, try and get Lita Chandler, because we uh, once we're in the parlor, we have to use the parlay action. Uh, you can also resign your investigators if you want to get out of there, get out of dodge. Uh, when Cheetla, Lita Chatler is not controlled by a player, she gains parlay test for knowledge. If you succeed, take control. So I think we'll have Roland try to tank some of these enemies and we'll have uh, Wendy go and grab Lita. Because Lita ha buffs up everyone's attack in that location. So I think we'll have Lita or Wendy go first. Um, so... Wendy is going to use one action to move to the uh, move to there. We're going to have parlay at a test of knowledge four. Um, we have three knowledge. Oof. We don't have a lot. We can commit to it. I might just have to risk it. I'm just going to commit uh, Leo because I don't think we're going to have the time to actually gain enough resource for this. Because um, we can also use a card to discard to redraw a Chaos Token. So I'm going to commit plus one knowledge. So we're at four to four. So we're at least tied. Roland actually would have been much better doing this. But that's okay. Roland's engaged. A, and we get Cultist. Ooh, that's a minus one. And if you fail, take one horror. Um... I'm going to redraw. So when you reveal a Chaos Token, choose and discard one card from your hand. Cancel that and return it to the bag. Reveal a new one. And I think we'll just get rid of pickpocketing. Because I'm going to maybe use the Derringer to actually... This is probably not a good play, but I really want to get Lita Chandler. Come on, give me plus one. Oh, it's the worst one. Well, one of the worst ones. We got minus four. So that's an uber fail. So that is... a. Uh, not gonna happen um well that was what well, our second action so we can spend a third action to try again i'm just gonna keep trying um and we're gonna spend a third action our last action to parlay again hey we get the plus one so that's gonna be a success uh because we we're at three to four we actually needed the plus one i didn't even think about that because i didn't have the positive anymore or the bonus from last check uh, so we actually did need that plus one, the, the only plus one in the pile. Um, all right, so we actually get Lita Chandler. Uh, we don't have any allies, so that's good, so it doesn't discard anything. So now um, it buffs up everyone's things when she's in the right location, um, which means I actually want to move Roland into the parlor. So Roland's turn now. Yeah, we're going to move into the parlor because that does bring all engaged enemies with you. Um... Oh, if you're engaged with an enemy and spend any action to do anything other than fight, evade, or activate a parley or resign an uh, ability, each enemy engaged with you makes an attack of opportunity. Oh, okay. Well, we and we don't want to do that. I think I guess we'll just try to get rid of the uh, ghoul minion. So I think actually maybe I just try to tank a little bit. The ghoul minion only does one. Really need to kill this ghoul priest. I mean that's the main thing, right? But we can't utilize our machete very well unless it's the only engaged enemy. So I think, yeah, I think we will fight the ghoul minion and try to get rid of that. It's it, My combat ability is... Um, actually, let's play... Oof, I can't even play the knife, otherwise they get to attack me. Because I was going to say I could discard the magnifying glass and play the knife for a better bonus. But that's fine. Um, yeah, I think actually we'll use Vicious Blow. Vicious Blow will get us a plus one, but also it gets plus one damage, meaning we don't have to use two fight actions to kill this. So we'll do Vicious Blow. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, which makes our fight ability five to... Actually, we'll use our Machete. We, we'll lose it on the damage, but that's fine. So we're at six... Um, six to two. 
and we'll do plus one damage thanks to the vicious blow. Uh, we got the gravestone symbol. Uh, minus two. If there's a ghoul enemy at your location, take one damage. Well, there definitely is. The minus two doesn't affect us, but we do take a damage still. Oof. Um, but we do get a kill of the ghoul minion thanks to the plus one damage. And that was with one action, so we have two actions left. I think I'm going to draw a card. We got Beat Cop. Ooh, it's a... Okay, so we can play this if once the guard dog leaves. Because um, that'll help us with fighting as well. Um, and then we will use our last action to fight the Ghoul Priest again using the Machete. And now that the, uh, this is the only enemy engaged with us, we get plus one damage if we succeed. So its fight is four. We're at five to four. Um, so plus one. Not greatest odds. Uh, do I want to commit... Uh, I could commit the knife for plus one, but I think I'd rather get that knife in play, potentially. Actually, let's just get the knife. Yeah, let's, let's, let's just commit the knife. Give us a better fighting chance. Because we don't really need it with the machete. Um, so we're at plus two now. So we're at six to four. Hey, okay. Well, I didn't really need to do that, but that's okay. Just increase our odds. So we got a minus one, so that's going to succeed. Because of the machete, we do two damage to the ghoul priest. Only eight more to go. Um, so yeah, we fought once. Uh, we drew, yeah, we drew a card and fought, sec fought a second time. So that's going to be it for that. So that is all of our actions for that so now it's the enemy's turn the enemy just straight up does its damage to you which for the ghoul priest is two health damage and two horror so we go to three and three so that's not great because only oh actually i could get the guard dog to take the damage yeah because i think we're gonna be playing the beat cop anyways so yeah let's actually We'll take our, well, the guard dog's going to jump in the way, take the damage, and die. But because when an enemy attack deals damage to guard dog, deal one damage to the attacking enemy. So, ghoul priest actually takes another damage and goes up to three. Plus it saves us. Um, okay, so that's the only enemy. Uh, so that enemy is exhausted. Um, but we move to the upkeep phase. Uh, this re-engages we flip over these cards and we each get a resource and draw a card so roland gets to draw dodge Ooh, that's really good we essentially get a cancel on attacks so that's awesome that's a good draw oh, we drew the other weakness for wendy abandoned and alone ay, ay, ay. take two direct horror and remove all cards in your discard pile from the game so essentially we can't reshuffle these back into the game wow that her weaknesses really suck uh, so that brings us up to three horror. Uh, luckily, Wendy's stats are pretty good, seven and seven. So, but boy. And that also essentially negates a card draw for us. That really sucks. Um, all right, well, we've got Doom going on the Doom track for the Mythos phase, and we draw an encounter card. So one for Roland. Oh, it's another ghoul minion, shoot. And then for Wendy. Wendy also gets a ghoul minion on her. Yikes, that's really bad. Um, all right, well, it's our turn. We'll have Wendy go first, hopefully kill this ghoul minion. I'm going to discard my knife for plus two. Oh, actually, no, we don't need to do that because we have Lita. Um, so we get plus one from Lita, plus one from the knife. So we're at three, three to two. Oof. I get rid of the Derringer. And I think it's better just to make sure we can get rid of this ghoul minion. Let's discard the knife. Oh, also Dissonant Voices goes away. Uh, we discard that. So it is plus two. So we're at plus three currently. So four to two. And 
we get additional damage. Not like it matters to the ghoul minion, but that's fine. And we drew a minus one. So, again, another situation where we didn't really need to do that, but the extra damage was is good. Um, so that frees us up, so then we can spend our second action to move back into the hallway to help out uh, Roland. And I think then, now that we're freed up, I'm going to spend three resources to equip the Derringer. So then we can really get going on fights. Because with Alita Chantler plus Derringer, we can do three damage per shot. Okay, I think I'm feeling pretty good about this. I think we're going to be okay. I say that, but we'll see. Um, okay, well, I can't draw cards because I'm engaged. Um, so... Um, well, we... Uh, it's really awkward, though, because I can't really get the beat cop into play until I get out of here. But I can't... There's no way I'm going to be able to evade the ghoul priests. So I think I just commit the beat cop to... A combat attack. Do we waste stuff on the ghoul minion? So if I spent all three of my actions attacking, Machete would lose it on the plus one damage, but we get plus one damage from Lita Chandler. So we could potentially do six damage total. Can't quite kill. Um, yeah, I think we get rid of the ghoul minion. Oh, uh, the problem is, oh yeah. Yeah, with Lita Chandler, we can get rid of the Ghoul Minion with one attack. So let's attack the Ghoul Minion. We get plus one for Lita, plus one for Machete. So we're at six to two. Good odds. Oh, but of course we draw the auto fail. Of course. Of course. Well, that's going to be a fail. So second action, we're going to fight again. Same stats, at least. We get a minus three, but luckily even a minus three, we still win because we're six to two. Um, so that's going to kill the ghoul minion. And then my last action we'll use to fight the ghoul, pri uh, ghoul priest. And I am going to discard the beat cop to get plus one to my fight. So we're at four, five, six, seven. Seven to four. And we get to do plus two damage. Okay, we got a minus two. So that's going to succeed. Um, so we get plus one damage for Machete, plus one damage for Lita Chandler. It's going to be three damage total. So up to six. And that is essentially going to be all of our actions for the investigators. So we're almost there. I think I think this good. Hopefully there's not too many more enemies in the deck or no bad events for us. Um, enemy phase gets to go. Ghoul Priest is going to attack us. I'm just going to use dodge and I'm going to play when an enemy attacks an investigator at your location and cancel that attack. So that does nothing. There's no more enemies to, to attack. So we go to the upkeep phase. This gets re-engaged. We get our stuff back and we get um, resources. Um, oh yeah, it was one resource to play that. Whoops. Is there anything else that I forgot to pay for? I don't think so. Um, and we draw a card. We've got a flashlight, which is useless. And for Wendy, we have burglary. Uh, that is also useless. Well, it's better than a weakness, I guess. Um, all right, Mythos Phase gets a Doom on the Doom Tracker. Up to three out of seven. Encounter card for Roland. Oh, it's a Flesh Eater. That is a tough enemy. Spawn in the attic, though. Okay, so it actually doesn't engage with anyone right away, which is good. Um, and then for Wendy, Crypt Chill. Test for willpower as a hazard. If you fail, choose and discard one asset you control. If you cannot take two damage instead. Oh, oh, that's actually not too bad. Oof, I was gonna, I was a little bit worried. It doesn't specify ally. It's only asset, so we can get rid of the flashlight if we fail this. So it's a uh, four, so we're at four to four right now. So I'll just take that. Uh, and we draw a minus two, so that is a fail. So we do have to discard our flashlight, which is perfectly fine. Um, all right, then it's the investigator's turn. So we're just gonna try to have Roland finish this. Um, can't commit anything. Um, so it's just gonna be a five to four. Just need one of these to succeed. Actually, no, we need two. Two from Roland. 
Hey, we get a minus one. That is going to be success. That plus one from Lita Chandler. Actually, we had plus two, so we're actually six to four. So actually, that was good. So we do three more damage, bringing Ghoul Priest up to nine. So we need to do one more damage. Second action, we're going to fight the Ghoul Priest. Um... Wait, did I miss at any point? I don't think so. I think I actually succeeded with every attack with Roland so far. Because I have to remember that uh, Ghoul Priest has Retaliate. Oh wait, didn't we get the... No, I think Wendy got the auto fail on something instead. Hey, we got the positive. So plus uh, one for each clue at your location. There's no clues, but that counts as a zero. So that is going to kill the Ghoul Priest. The last point of damage, 10 damage and that Ghoul Priest is dead. And it comes with two victory points on the card there, meaning that we do get uh, two experience essentially, because you can actually buy cards in between scenarios to customize your deck and stuff like that. And that is gonna be a success. So we flip over this card. When the robed creature falls, the fiendish swarm burrows back into the ground and the chaos of the house quiets, but the stranger in your parlor doesn't seem relieved. You broke the seal that was set to trap the ghouls within. She raises her torch. Now we must take more direct measures and burn this hell pit to the ground. So the lead investigator must choose either it never was much of a home, burn it down, or this hell pit is my home, no way are we burning it. Um, I can't remember what we chose, my girlfriend and I. I think we burned it down. Or did we? I don't remember. Either way, let's choose to burn it down. Why not? Um, and so you look at, so there's like a choose your own adventure style component to this game, which is very, very cool. Um, so resolution one, you nod and allow the red haired woman to set the walls and floor of your house ablaze. The fire spreads quickly and you run out the front door to avoid being caught in the inferno. From the sidewalk, you watch as everyone you, everything you own is consumed by flames. Come with me, the woman says. You must be told of the threat that lurks below. Alone, we are surely doomed, but together we can stop it. In your campaign log, record that your house has been burned to the ground. The lead investigator earns Lita Chandler and may include it in her deck, uh, his or her deck, and the card does not count towards the investigator's uh, deck size. Uh, my girlfriend was actually the one that got it before. The uh, lead investigator suffers one mental trauma from, suffer, from watching his or her home become a smoldering ruin. Uh, I don't know what mental trauma is mechanically, but I'm guessing it adds more weaknesses to your deck maybe. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. Um, each investigator earns two bonus experience as he or she gains insight into the hidden world of Mythos. So that means we have, in total, we have four experience total, uh, which is very, very awesome. Um, and essentially each card, uh, there's little pips in the top left that'll represent how much a card uh, is to actually purchase. Um, and we did have location cards with victory points, but I believe you only get the victory points if you completely successfully clear all clues from it. And yeah, the, the seller had would have had four clues on it too. But that is it. We got a successful run. Uh, that actually went pretty smoothly. Um, I, was, I think we were pretty lucky getting like the machete and stuff fairly early on, and we did get our clues very, very quickly. Again, this is the very first scenario. This is like the tutorial mission, essentially. So it's meant to be fairly easy. Although overall, it's still a very difficult game. Um, I definitely see it being very difficult if you're playing solo, completely solo with only one investigator. Um, definitely less to manage and less to think about, but you definitely lose a lot of things because the way the game is designed is each of the different characters or investigators in the game are very specialized. So you don't have anyone to fill uh, whatever weaknesses you might have in your deck. But that's going to do it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little introduction into Arkham Horror, our little start of our little campaign run, I think. I think we'll definitely move through the core box as uh, my girlfriend and I progress through it and also play through the... Um, the Dunwich Legacy campaign once I get to that as well, once I'm done the core box. Um, and maybe we'll even talk with, you know, talk about doing some deck building stuff. Um, I did talk about in the community tab, I did do a little bit of a test stream on Twitch, um, unboxing the Dunwich Legacy and testing the board game setup as a, a live stream. And it actually worked out very well. So I think I might start doing live streams on YouTube. Uh, if you're still here, let me know in the comments below uh, if you would actually like to see that. Um, but that is going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you have a great rest of your day and we will see you next time.